the very latest politician warning Israel that its military operation in Gaza has to stop. Donald Trump this time. The man who described himself as the most pro-Israel president ever has joined the calls and joined the clamour for Israel to cease what it is doing in the Gaza Strip. It follows the vote of the UN Security Council last night that there should be a ceasefire. It comes after pressure from our government here in the UK, from the Biden administration in the US. And it does just feel, doesn't it, like patience has run out. Across the Western world, across Western capitals, different parties, different leaders, different politicians, now all saying the same thing. Effectively, this can't go on. It can't go on much longer. Does it, though, suggest that the end to this conflict is in sight? Because it seems to me that whatever Donald Trump and Joe Biden and Rishi Sunak say, Benjamin Netanyahu and his cabinet, his government in Israel, are absolutely determined to carry on with this military action for as long as they possibly can. Partly, I think, because they know that their political survival depends on dragging it out as long as they can. Do you have any hope that this conflict might be coming to a close? What do you think should happen next? What do you think should happen now? And how does this end? How does this brutal, bloody war that has left over 30,000 people dead in less than half a year, how does it end? How should it end, in your view? Because people say we need a ceasefire, but neither Israel nor Hamas shows any indication or inclination whatsoever that they're going to pursue one. People say Israel should stop its military operation, and I've got some sympathy with that. But very few people have been able to answer the question, what should happen to Hamas if military action to topple it ends? It feels like there's a a desperation for the bloodshed to stop. And I get that and I, I support it. But a lot of confusion and lack of clarity about what should come next. So that's my question to you, really. What do you think should happen now? Should Israel heed these warnings and stop? And if it should... What would that look like? What should the next next steps be? Can it really tolerate a situation where it stops its attack, but Hamas stays in power on its doorstep, having vowed to repeat the massacre of the 7th of October over and over again, if it can? What should happen next? Should Israel heed calls for it to stop its operation in Gaza? And how, in your view, should this conflict end? Give me a ring. 0345 6060 973, the number. You can WhatsApp the same number or you can text if you prefer 84850. Here is Donald Trump with his message to Israel a little earlier today. Israel's in trouble right now. It's a troubled, it's a very troubled place. Uh, An attack happened that should have never been allowed to happen, both from the Israeli standpoint and from the United States standpoint. If they respected our president, which they don't, they have no respect for him whatsoever, that attack would not have happened. That's why it wouldn't have happened with me. But I say just be strong, be smart, and uh, let's get this over with. And when it's over with, you're going to be back to having a great life. And what Donald Trump also said is that Israel has to be very careful, his words, because, quote, it's losing a lot of support. And when you look at what's happened in the last few weeks in particular... It's very difficult to argue with that, isn't it? It's very difficult to argue with that. But he also said something that I thought was very interesting, and I'm very interested in your thoughts on it, which was that Israel's big mistake wasn't launching an operation to try to topple Hamas. It wasn't carrying out military action in Gaza. It was, as he put it, allowing the photos and shots of uh, bombs being dropped into buildings on Gaza, uh, which he says was a terrible portrait and a very bad picture for the world. So what he's saying really is that Israel did the right thing. In fact, he said that any country would have done the same. But what it's got wrong isn't the military element to this. It's the media element to it. It's the way that it's gone about trying to convince other people of the righteousness of what it's doing. It's a PR mistake rather than a military one, rather than an ethical one. I wonder if you agree with that, that basically the big thing that Israel has got wrong in the last six months isn't anything to do with how it's behaved in Gaza, but the fact that it's allowed the photos of how it's behaved in Gaza to go around the world. Is that the big error that Israel's made here? 
That number again, 0345 6060 Let's kick off our conversation with Sir William Patey, former head of the Middle East Department at the British Foreign Office and former British ambassador to Saudi Arabia, Iraq and Afghanistan. Sir William, great to have you on the programme uh, tonight. Is that your assessment too, that patience has at least run thin and quite possibly run out in a number of Western capitals, London and Washington uh, among them, with what Benjamin Netanyahu and uh, the Israeli government are doing? doing in Gaza. Good evening. Yes, evening. Well, undoubtedly, I think the uh, it's clear that the Americans have, uh, having warned uh, uh, Netanyahu's government not to make the same mistakes that they made in, in Afghanistan and Iraq by overreacting to a horrific terrorist attack, in the, in the Americans' case, the 9-11, uh, and no one was in any doubt uh, about the appalling nature of Hamas's attack on the 7th of October. But right at the start, uh, Joe Biden has said, you know, um, be be restrained. And, you know, nobody doubted Israel's uh, right to um, to respond and to defend itself. But, you know, over 30-odd thousand civilians have been killed. Uh, Gaza has been laid to waste. There's a humanitarian crisis there. We could have mass starvation. Uh, you're looking at uh, a crisis way beyond, a death toll way beyond uh, what Israel suffered in, in, the, in the initial attack. And American patience has, has run uh, thin. Everyone ne- uh, thinks that they're, apart from the Israeli government, I think, that you need a, a, a ceasefire in order to get the levels of humanitarian assistance into Gaza to prevent an even worse catastrophe. Now, I'm not confident that Israel will uh, heed the message that the UN resolution sent them, that there should be an immediate ceasefire. It's, it's, uh, the Americans think it's non-binding, uh, but it's, an, it's international law now, uh, the call for the ceasefire. There's no enforcement mechanism but uh, it's both think, sides to William, isn't it? There's no there's no indication sure, that Hamas is going to heed calls for a ceasefire either. No, no. But I, I think the, the difference is I, I don't think the Israeli government wants to be put on the same par with a terrorist organization. We don't expect much from a terrorist organization. We do expect something different from uh, uh, from uh, a government, a, a state. Um, uh, I think it would be very difficult if, it, if Israel was to observe a ceasefire and Hamas was to continue to attack. Um, Israel would be justified in in, in in continuing to going after them. So I think Hamas would have no real choice. The question is, how do you get the levels of humanitarian aid into Gaza at the moment to prevent an even bigger tragedy than you've got uh, already? I mean, Israel, Israel is intent on finishing the job, the job they set themselves of destroying Hamas and driving them out of, um, out of uh, Gaza. So I presume that means they will either kill Yahya Sinwar and the leadership or uh, have them expelled from from Hamas, uh, fr- from Gaza. Whether that is going to lead to uh, saving the hostages, um, uh, in my experience, I've quite a lot of experience of hostage taking and their release, um, very rarely has bombing civilian areas led to a good result in terms of releasing hostages. So I think that Israel's in a dilemma now. Uh, the pressure's on them. Uh, the humanitarian crisis gets worse. Um, but I think they've still got this. They will still be intent on a continued military operation for days, if not weeks to come. Is there an alternative, Sir William, if you accept that Israel cannot tolerate a situation in which Hamas remains in power, remains a threat on its very doorstep? Are they left with no alternative but to continue military action? I think the alternative is to uh, bring the fighting to a halt, to allow some, to allow the um, uh, international community to meet the humanitarian needs of Gaza, mm-hmm. to insist that there is a different Palestinian leadership. There's already there's already a, a new Palestinian government being formed uh, with the idea that it would be it wouldn't be Hamas that was in in charge and running Gaza. It would be a uh, non-political uh, Palestinian authority that would run Gaza and and Are the Hamas West Bank. going to agree to that though? Uh, I don't think Hamas will. Uh, you know, I, I think Hamas has been discredited. Uh, I think uh, I don't think Hamas can be part of the conversation given given the attack that they, uh, they they perpetrated. But Hamas is not all all Palestinians. Israel has tried to perpetrate uh, the the myth that everybody in Gaza is a member of Hamas. But, but, That's not the case. But if, if they are going to be forced from power, then either they have to be that has to be done through force. 
or presumably they have to agree to it. If they're not going to agree well, they to are. it, then they're not in power. They're not in power at the moment. They're not running anything. They're, they're, they're you know, there's there's a residual number of Hamas fighters who are who are um, uh, who continue to uh, uh, to survive, if you like. Mm. They're not actually and uh, fighting whatever Israeli troops are on the ground. But they're not. They're not in power. They're not running Gaza. They're not. They're, they're not maintaining order. They're not distributing humanitarian assistance. They're not running any services. They're not in power. They're a. They're a terrorist organization on the run. But they're still a threat to Israel. I don't think they're a you serious they threat to Israel at the moment. You know, they're they they uh, you know they're confined, they're hiding in in, in Rafa and in various parts of Gaza. I don't think they're a serious threat to Israel. What, what do you think the the big mistake that Israel has made in the last few months is, Sir William? Donald Trump seeming to suggest today that it it's it's a PR uh, failure more than anything else. What do you think they've got particularly wrong? Well, I'm afraid, you know, uh, I don't think much of... Do I listened to that Donald Trump quote there. It was all about him. It would never have happened if he'd been in power. I mean, complete nonsense. Uh, yeah, I mean, what he's advocating is that what Israel should have done is lock the place down and not allowed anyone to report from Gaza. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, all oh, total nonsense. Uh, I mean, the the reality, the modern reality is that anyone with a camera is a journalist, uh, anyone with an iPhone is a journalist. So Israel could not have. Uh, I mean, Israel has controlled the media in Israel because I. It's quite clear that the Israeli public are not seeing the scenes uh, that we see uh, uh, in in Gaza. We're not seeing the same. They're not. They're not seeing the same. Uh, you know, level of civilian uh, deaths that we are. Um, but they're not able to control the global media. So, so what have they got wrong? Where's, where have the mistakes been made, do you think, by Netanyahu and Israel? Well, I mean, where do you start? I mean, the, 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 Israel was pursuing a, 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 um, a policy of um, expanding in the West Bank. They, 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 they had most of, most of the uh, IDF... Uh, divisions were in the West Bank supporting what I'd call extreme settler activity. Mm -hmm. They left the border with Gaza uh, pretty lightly defended, and that's what a lot of uh, Israeli military uh, spokesmen are saying. And and the the word from Israel is that there will be a reckoning for Netanyahu and and his government for having um, sold Israel short in its defence. Um, and so that 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 was the starting point. They kept they kept Gaza in, in a kind of uh, there was a there was a complacency about Gaza. I mean, with the with the cooperation of the Qatari government, the Israelis were cooperating with Qatar to get just enough money into Gaza to keep Gaza ticking over. They were reasonably happy with Hamas running uh, running Gaza because it meant that the Palestinians were divided. So mm. there was a policy there of just to keeping a lid on it, and that failed. So that's the starting point from all that. Then the you know then the uh, the the degree of uh, aerial bombing and. Uh, uh, destruction of civilian infrastructure and this constantly forcing um, Gazans, Palestinians into an ever, ever diminishing area of safety, which there was never any safety. Um, I, I think there are elements of the Israeli government that were intent on making it impossible for Palestinians to remain in Gaza. And there's a conversation here about a wider agenda, a wider agenda, which would be to make uh, Gaza uninhabitable for Palestinians. Do you think that was the aim of the Israeli government? Some members of the Israeli government have been very open yep. about that, that they want, you know, they, they want to uh, uh, depopulate Gaza and uh, reintroduce settlements uh, and, and reverse the 2005 withdrawal. Some of them have been very open. And, and these are the people, as you say, Sir William, who, who have positions of enormous power in Israel. I mean, if we accept that there cannot be lasting peace with, peace with Hamas in power in Gaza, can there be lasting peace with the people that you're talking about, Netanyahu among them, in power on the other side of that wall. Well, I think there's a lot of people. You know, Chuck Schumer, uh, the Senate uh, yep. Democratic leader, was was very clear about you know the, the Netanyahu's government need to go, and I yep. think there's quite a lot of people. Not only the Hamas have to go and not be uh, not be representative of the Palestinians. It may mean a different government in Israel because there's now a there's now a lot of 
talk about a two-state solution, which before Hamas attack, nobody was really talking about. Most people would have thought that the path to a two-state solution has has gone. It's still a very difficult uh, path to have a two-state solution, but the Americans are talking about it. Britain is talking about it, the European Union. Uh, so if you want to have a secure Israel living in, side by side with a, 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 a peaceful Palestinian state that isn't a threat to Israel, there's a lot of work to 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 be put in for that to to happen. Hamas has to, to be marginalised, and I I can't see how an Israeli government headed by Netanyahu mm-hmm. Netanyahu that includes ministers like uh, Ben Gavir and Smotrich yep. and settler leaders uh, could could take that forward. I, I guess I guess it's easy to see how Benjamin Netanyahu and those sorts of people are removed from power because there will be elections in Israel in the coming years. More difficult to see how Hamas will be removed uh, from power in Gaza.